Okay, let's just talk about uh, some of the progress here now. So uh, let me just show you. So I'm making some more fish for the lower uh, pool, okay, uh, out of Super Scalpy, okay. And Super Scalpy is just great uh, for doing fish, you know. Easy to sculpt, easy to carve, you know. They look pretty good. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to make three. I don't know if I'll use three, but they're going to be steelhead, actually, because the where like Silver Creek, which is what this diorama is based on, is so memorable, memorable to me. I've had so many cool experiences up there. I've seen many black bears and the steelhead. It's a steelhead fishery now. Like literally, you can walk right up to some of the pools and just look at them like they're huge. You know, they're 10 to 20 pounds. And they go up. It's protected now up there. It's just up near Silver Lake in BC. But this Silver Creek is further up where I used to go fly fishing for trout and, and like bull trout. Some steelhead make it up that way too. But you can only go there in the fall and it's all catch and release. Uh, here's one of the fish uh, steelhead that the bear has caught that I'm almost finished. Just got to add the fins. Okay. And then um, here's what's, what's going to be a bald eagle. He's going to be in the foreground, uh, up on the left side in a foreground tree, looking towards the bear and then the fish down in the pool. So that's the story. Silver Creek, and it's all real. Like, this isn't a fantasy, right? So that's why I'm probably going to do it in a box diorama, because I want to create the sort of uh, beautiful rainforest, you know, babbling creek full of steelhead and black bears and eagles, right? Like that's right in my backyard where I live. Okay, so I'm going to be sculpting, or am in the process of sculpting a small steelhead, Silver Creek, Silver Steelhead, right? Um, so I'm doing a few, but I'm only going to use one. I decided I would use this one. It has more of a turning posture to it. I posed a few. This is super sculpy, and I just rough it in. These are a couple of the subjects I was doing, but they're going to get deleted. Um, and the, I was going to have three fish in there, but it's too crowded, too many. You want to be careful with dioramas. You don't want to overdo it. Like you don't want to like have one main story and it should be simple and the viewer should get it right away, almost right away. And then any other little subplot should support the story. So the idea is this fish, if the viewer is attentive enough, they'll see it in the water, but they'll be captivated when they first walk up to it. by the bear with the fish, right? Speaks for itself. He just pulled the fish out of the creek. And this guy's in one of the other pools, obviously, and trapped by low water kind of thing. So uh, he'll just be turning off the shoal. So this pin, brass pin, pops into the tray and you won't see it. So he'll just be coming down, up, down off the shoal, going down into the deep. the pool and that's the idea behind him they're a bit difficult to to cover this to, to to sculpt but this is super sculpty so i just baked off the main body of the fish and then i like to just pencil in some of the details here's the gill plates which i'll just carve in and then i can accentuate those with a wash sort of thing and then there's the mouth and the eye which i'll tweak up a bit so I just pencil those on according to a photograph. I'll work on the uh, gills here. It's fairly soft, this uh, Super Sculpey, like even when it's baked, like it's got a sort of a soft texture, which is why I like it. Poxy putty can be pretty stiff and hard to sculpt and you got to put more into it. <laughs> 
And when you're using a small blade like this, you don't want to be loading up too much, as you all know, where that can lead. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some Evergreen Clear. I've done this before. They look quite good, actually, for the dorsal fin, the tail fin, and the adiphos, is it? Or adiphos fins. Um, I'm going to use the clear for those. And then when I paint them, I won't cover them up totally, and they'll have a little bit of a transparent look to them. Remember how I talked about GAC 500? Where do you think canopy glue comes from? Where do you think clear acrylic gloss coat comes from? Comes from that stuff right there. It's just a gloss extender. That's what they call it, the artist version of gloss extender, but super high quality. Do creeks, ponds, uh, clear coat, Clear coat texture, rapids, fins on fish. The stuff is awesome. Love it. Water based. Dries quick when you use it in small amounts. You can pour it thick, it'll clear eventually for water. You can use it to texture resin, uh, even epoxy resin. Uh, if you pour this on and stab it with a mop brush and just ripple it and stuff. So it's super, once again, right? Like, I like having my products narrowed down so that when they're on the bench, they're multi-purpose. So uh, here's the, the steel head. Uh, just gonna tweak his lower jaw just a bit but before paint, but uh, he's pretty good because you're not going to see all of them. Like you'll see them like that, like down under the water. So I can stage them and angle them in the diorama tray and basically compose exactly where I want them uh, according to the viewer, you know, and how you view it. He's, he's big compared to the pond, but, or the pool. But I really like that. And then what I can do is, is I can paint this with acrylic, right? Like I'll uh, base this out with white. Tamiya. And then I'll use isopropyl alcohol to gently stroke away the paint on the fins. Just so there's a little bit of transparency there. Okay. Which is just in closing on this fish. Uh, I want to point out why I like to use super sculpy for this. Okay, so this was baked in the oven, this this piece, so it's hard. But it has a, like, <clears throat> excuse me, you can see how I could push a knife into it. Like, it's hard to explain. And I have pieces like this that are 25, 30 years old, I think, uh, from little animals that I did, you know, decades ago, and they're still the same, just like this. Hard, um, you know, resilient. You know, it takes paint well. 
If you make this out of epoxy putty, then it's harder to machine from a delicate point of view. That's all. That's why I like to do it for this when you're using fins like this. But it looks cool, eh? It's amazing how the fins make the fish, don't they? Anyway, I look forward to painting this guy and mounting him in the bottom pool. Okay. I want to show you um, proof of concept here with the diorama tray methodology that I use when I model water, whether it's a lake, creek, river, it doesn't really matter. Uh, this method works for any body of water, uh, salt water, fresh water, beach scene, cut bank, shoals, like, you know, whatever uh, you want to model basically. And like, here's an example, like, uh, you can see like that's just wood underneath, right? That's just the plywood that you see shining through. See my fingers there? Uh, here's an example of the fish, which I haven't painted yet, but I'll just show you uh, depending on the, right? The tint of the water in the background is going to establish how that fish is viewed, right? Okay. Now I can control that, right? Like the water texture is already done. Like it's tinted and it's already done. It looks quite emerald green now, but it doesn't, when you see the diorama in its natural light, which is a subject for debate, um, it changes. It doesn't look quite like this. Actually, it looks really good, I think. Uh, if it didn't, I would have changed it. Now, um, here's a, uh, here's a look at the diorama tray, okay? So this is the fish. So let's just say, before I paint the fish, but let's just say I want to mount the fish. Um, let's just say, yeah, right there or like that. Okay, see that? So now I'm, I'm, I'm actually composing under the water in this diorama tray. So this is another plane of the 3D world, right? So I can basically um, position this fish. So when I put it underneath, I can compose it, see? And I can now say, well, I don't really, I want him to be arcing down a bit so it looks like he's going down in under that log there then I can basically lift this up change the position a bit like this put the tray back underneath and there you go see I don't like that he's curved too much in one way I'll just move his tail a bit See, so that's why I do this. And because now I'm in control of the whole composition above the water and below the water. And uh, I can basically choreograph the whole scene and tweak it at will. And when I'm happy with it, then I'll just glue the tray or clamp it in place underneath. But now I can also uh, paint the fish, okay? So I can, uh, uh, like paint the fish and then I can say, well, the background is too dark. Uh, I want more contrast. And so I can just take some earth or buff and just spray lightly just in behind that, take him out of there and just spray in behind that and then remount the fish. And, and you know what I mean? Like say, okay, that looks good. Right. That's why I do this way. Like that's why I, I uh, like to model um, in this manner. And you know, like some might say, "Oh, the uh, you know, it's quite a large fish for a small pool." Yeah, it is, but it is art at the end of the day. And um, 
I've literally seen pink salmon, like like witness pink salmon spawn or spawning and migrating up logging roads, like like ruts in logging roads from flooded rivers. If you want to see that, just come to BC. And so, you know, as soon as you think there's a situation that doesn't exist when you model it, if it doesn't meet, you know, the uh, critique, <laughs> uh, it's probably happened a thousand times, you know. You just weren't there to see it. So um, that is why I like to model water this way. And this is proof of concept, okay? Okay, so you can see that didn't take long, right? So this fish was made from super scalpy, uh, as I pointed out earlier, and then evergreen 0.05 thou uh, clear plastic for fins, okay? And then I used GAC 500, it was just on hand. I thought it would be a good, put a nice smooth finish on the super scalpy before I painted it. And then you can see I just used flat, like a very thin flat, XF2, Tamiya, thinned with IPA, XF11, JN Green. I didn't want it too dark like in this color rendition, which is subject to, uh, you know, whatever, right? <laughs> you know, I, I don't, you know, I don't push color dogma when it comes to things like this, because like if you paint this like that, and you shrink it down, it gets dark really fast. So I want more of a green, I want more color in it. I don't want it to go black because when it's underneath the, the tinted glass surface, right, it, uh, it's gonna change it again, right? It might make it look even more greener or darker, but um, you know, depending on the light shining through. So all those things are gonna change your color perception, right? So you can see just the white and the green with the airbrush, like how it does that. Like see with the acrylic, how it blends the, and very difficult to do with a traditional brush. I mean, you can, but an airbrush makes short work of it, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this dry overnight and then I'm gonna use some oils for the, uh, I wanna add a little bit of crimson, you know, along the side to sort of a rainbow effect. And as far as the silver goes, um, I don't really need to put silver on this. like. Like there's no silver on these, even though they look silver, but it's because of the blue. So I'm just gonna use some washes on here and uh, um, we'll see how that goes. I mean, you could spray this with a light coat of silver if you want, but uh, there's a lot of ways you can do that to achieve a certain look that you want. But I find with fish, like you don't, like they get lost, like in the details, if you make them too realistic. Uh, I've noticed this in the past when I've done dioramas with like underwater scenes. You want the fish to show as you're looking down into the water.
Okay, so just in closing then, you can see here clearly that there's no ugly resin creep. I was able to preserve a lot of the details, the fine crisp shoreline, and even if I wanted to, I could insert reeds and things into this acrylic, like another layer, and it won't creep up and make it look ugly. It'll look like it's actually coming out of the water. Also notice too, like in some situations with logs, if they're cut in half, like you really can't tell, uh, it, like, you don't need to see the bottom of the log because you can't because of the shadow, etc., and the ripple of water going around it. You can hide things like that. And also, you can't really tell if the shore matches up with the shoreline, even though there's one eight thick plexiglass there. Because someone had mentioned that. I mean, clearly, I've done this before, but it, if you pull it off properly and take your time, it's a beautiful way to model water above and below with full control, right? So this is proof of concept, see? And you can vary the only, like there's only one thin to me a green color underneath this plexiglass. That's what makes this whole filter look the way it does. Now, when you view the model under different lighting, this, this changes somewhat. Like I've got lights coming down just to show on social media, but it really does look fantastic. Uh, when you see it live i'm really pleased with with the result because i did envision it this way i didn't think the fish would be quite this large maybe if i could change something i might have made them a bit smaller but i actually sculpted the fish and the bear first before i even built all this like that was the sort of passionate part that i wanted to get into right away to see if i could pull that off which would make the rest of this viable but you can see there right like uh, even if you don't have anything there what it looks like that's just manila colored and then of course you can see the color it's a little bit darker and how it changes so this is a filter right which is the same fundamental when you lay thin washes of paint over terrain etc you're in essence applying a filter to shift the underlying color okay it's not the filter that establishes the color it's the underlying layers that shine through, regardless of whether it's modeled water or just a thin surface with multiple washes, etc. Okay?